back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take a midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Ben Stone. That is Joe Bryant. And way over there, way over there is one picture of my <laughs> Yes. And we'll get everyone at home joining us live. Um, it's kind of brilliant. Over We're the back Atlantic. Wednesdays. Uh, yeah, let's just chat about some of the things uh, that we found cool. Fun. Morning. We try to have a little bit of fun on the show. So um, if you're allergic to that, <laughs> run elsewhere. What have you been up to, Pedro? I know we've all still been kind of trapped inside. Uh, you made a thing, though, didn't you? You were, you were creative. I did. You did arts which and crafts. Is on... <laughs> it's usually the one, uh, the one who does the things. It's you. But, uh, well, uh, awesome. you did ask uh, if I could make a video to show people how to do the little ghostly controller that I have in the uh, bottom right of my Dark Souls streams. Uh, so I, yeah, I did that. I, mm. As I mentioned before we started recording, I did forget one bit, which is uh, you need to set the color um, strength or the color accuracy or whatever OBS calls it. Just make sure it's 100% the color that you set it to, because at 50%, it still clips out the uh, red on the circle button for the mm. DualShock 4. So, yeah, you'll be able to figure it out. <laughs> You're all smart. I had I a good time <laughs> edited the video and uh, a little bit into it I kind of had the nice. um, like you know if you drag that window one more time <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I dragged the OBS window and then I opened the uh, the Chrome window it's like oh okay <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I got what you were doing the way you were thinking I'm like well I can mm -hmm. zoom in if you keep it in quad no come back <laughs> it was kind of fun what's up with you Joe oh Oh, so I've been really having a lot of fun enjoying playing with all the Ubuntu LTS-based distros for LWW and all the other streams I've been on that we review them. And had fun on Linux Unplugged yesterday again. That's all, I always have a great time. And Friday is my birthday, albeit in quarantine, so I don't even know what we're going to do. Uh <laughs> I guess go for a walk and pick up some dinner. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with a traditional cake. birthday walk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, could, you, you could make microwave brownies in a mug. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That'll be good. So I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff. Uh, we got this. I bought this uh, after two years of like, yeah. uh, and I, I'm, I haven't even dealt with the emotional issue of I spent half a grand on this little box. And um, I will get to that. It is cantankerous. Uh, this, this is not commodity hardware. This is not something you just pick up, plop into your system mm -hmm. and everything. Works. Audio listeners like, Vin, what are you talking about? This is the uh, Decklink Quad HDMI recorder. So it's got four 4K UHD 60 encoders built into it. And it's a learning experience, uh, mainly with, and it's like, I want mm -hmm. to be in this particular slot. No, by eight, no bifurcation. You better learn some more about that. No, you got an SSD on this. No, no. Uh -uh. Okay. I'll give you three, but fourth, if you do that, no. Um, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Saturday, awesome. Friday, I should have everything. This is going to let us do a lot more stuff. Um, this frees up a lot of space in our um, broadcasting system, which even though it was a thread ripper, what still is with, you know, four by 16 slots and two, those were full. It had no room. So there was oh, no expansion. Yeah. This immediately cut out three of the encoders. And once I, once I get everything rolled back, because I got to roll back to, uh, I'm, I'm running Debian testing like a moron because I am one. I'm just going to have to go back to Debian still. <laughs> 10 .0. I've, I've, I've ran into gotchas. Like right now we are, we are flying mm flying by the seat of our socks <laughs> and uh, oh, wow. i also got this thing um that i'll be testing i'm kind of taking one for the team i'm going to tell you what it is but there's a picture of it audio listeners you're gonna to have to watch the video Ooh, i mean uh it looks like a max lr <laughs> interposer <laughs> That's a big word. Ah. I'm proud of it. <laughs> XLR interface. <laughs> it's a filter that you plug into the thing and, and yeah, the that, other that thing. does look like that. Yeah. All right. So stay tuned. We'll find out more about it later. I'm probably in the week. completely. Oh, awesome. absolutely. Yeah. Not even in a ballpark. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. But that is what it looked like. It looked like one of those inline ones. All right. Uh, <laughs> First on Yay! the docket is good news from System76, because last week, uh, 2004 rolled out with Ubuntu. Yeah. So you're expecting this. 
Yay! So Pop! OS 2004 LTS has been released with lots of new features, making this one of their most important releases to date and actually one of my all-time favorites. And for those Leet hacksers out there, you don't have to use uh, use the mouse now with Pop! OS and GNOME. Yeah, so they've integrated um, keyboard shortcuts, allowing you to launch an application, switch between applications, toggle settings, minimize, maximize. And you can even use those beloved Vim keyboard shortcuts that everyone loves to use. <laughs> it's a really nice feature. And I've been having a lot of fun playing with that because I, I like to use uh, my desktop um, interface uh, with just uh, keyboard commands. Uh, kind of old school and leet, yes, but I love that. <laughs> and um, it also, the new Pop! OS also has the auto tiling, an auto tiling feature now that is very well implemented and really, really quite progressive. Um, you know, it's you can use the GNOME desktop now like you would a classic tiling window manager like Awesome or i3 by using the um, super key um, arrows, uh, super key zero for orientation. So, and it's it's really intuitive and really easy to use. And I was really impressed yeah, by I it. I have a <laughs> four gigabyte SSD that would beg to differ on your assertion there. But <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, just because i3 and awesome are like teeny tiny while gnome yeah. is... Yeah. Big, How big yeah. is gnome nowadays? A gig? Two? Yeah. Fish? It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. But one of the things that I saw was a uh, flat hub integration out of the box. Yes. Very nice. Very nice to see. Especially for a uh, Ubuntu based distro, that's very nice to see. Pop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm half Yay. tempted to uh, give it a try now. <laughs> uh, and uh, another thing I noticed uh, is that they said, just like, yeah, with uh, GNOME 3 implementing the um, feature of XKDE run on discrete GPU, it's like, that mm -hmm. that's the kde nice. thing that you can <laughs> set in the desktop file to just whenever you launch that particular desktop file the application runs on the discrete gpu if you have a laptop with switchable graphics like the nvidia's optimus or uh, i don't think amd ever came up with a fancy name for it but it's like don't get me wrong i don't mind i don't mind it at all in fact gnome 3 could use all the functionality that it can get its hands on because it needs it. Um, but no, that 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 was strange, but nice to see. So good job. <laughs> Yay, very good. Indeed, I was really surprised to see. Like, oh, we're doing the shortcut approach to <laughs> Dome because that's the first thing I do with any application. Maybe not so much with the desktop because you 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 have your built-in memory of like this should be a shortcut, and you kind of hunt and back around to you. But doing that for Gnome, huge fan of that. First thing I learned with any program is keyboard shortcuts because I'm lazy. And uh, mm -hmm. something I was really interested in, hybrid graphics support out of the box. Yes. Why aren't we doing this on every distribution? What, <laughs> yeah. What, th this is a beautiful <laughs> thing from Pop! OS. They're focusing on, hey, man, we want to sell laptops and computers. So we let's do things that should be there. No tinkering. It's an option. Hybrid graphics, what's that? It's going to let you flip and flop between your discrete CPU and your integrator. It's going to say battery life, man. That's brilliant. Huge fan of that. Automatic firmware updates are also available if you dare trust in that moon magic. I'm not quite there yet. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, on a laptop, I'd be more like, yeah, I'll try that on like this box I did nope. try it <laughs> on a laptop and uh i have to say i was impressed because i saw the uh it was on 2004 but just the regular ubuntu and it's like oh you have a bios update for your laptop and i'm like oh well let's try it <laughs> and it worked so <laughs> <laughs> serious pro tip don't update your bios unless something's broken Period. Oh, yes. <laughs> Period. Okay. Yeah. Inkscape 1.0. This is big news because it's not been 1.0 for. Ever. Yeah, this is huge. Um, after more than three years of development, Inkscape 1.0 has been released with some major updates, new features, and is so incredibly performant. I've been noticing how, how much zippier it is, how quicker it is, and just 
you know, just selecting the tools and and uh, creating the shapes on the on the canvas is just so much faster. And you know, I had done an interview of Ted Gould, Gould, co-founder of Inkscape in LWW episode one seventy five, and he said that Inkscape one point would include all of these feet these awesome new features, and it does. And this in- includes something huge being updated to GTK three point uh, that that's huge. That that is one of the reasons why it is more performant, and why they can actually now offer a native macOS application of Inkscape. I mean, and it also, you can control yeah. a car of that caliber on GTK too, which is that yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was a little slower. <laughs> no, <laughs> and uh, yeah, as uh, uh, Ven is sh- was showing there, it has the ability now to fillet and and camfer with precise coordinates using the corners live path effects. So there have been lots of new um, uh, live path effect updates. Uh, there's now high DPI support, which I was really happy about because now I can actually see the buttons and the, and the font on my, um, ultra HD 43 inch monitor. <laughs> that that's really, what really GPK3 is doing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's one of the big things. Yes. <laughs> and, um, the other cool thing is it's been translated now to over 20 languages and that's huge because now it makes, you know, Inkscape available uh, to many people around the world. And it, another huge thing is you, it now has customizable themes, icons, fonts, and the user interface, and includes a dark mode. <laughs> So There's high DPI, the okay. yeah. <laughs> high DPI, dark, dark mode, it runs faster. Just and all these new features. It's it's just an awesome release that I've been looking forward to for a long time, and and it delivered for sure. <laughs> Good piece of <laughs> kit, and that's definitely something that I've um, begrudgingly used. Not because I have a problem with the program, I just don't like having to art. Uh, but anytime I need to do a vectorization of graphics for printing on our merchandise, uh, that's what I use. Inkscape, good piece. Keep, keep, keep up the good work. Pedro, home is where the mm-hmm. D is. That's not going to be yes. a showtime. <laughs> oh, no. Just but get it, it out of your be. mind. I'm not, no. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, it totally should be. But no, no, no. Um, System D two four five uh, is coming, or it has been officially released, but most distros don't use it yet. Partially, you know, because mm-hmm. it's still brand new and it's System D, so it touches everything in Linux nowadays. So it is kind of a big thing to just update. But one of the new bits of functionality, which we have already kind of sort of hinted at uh, multiple times and we've even straight up discussed it a mm-hmm. while back, which is Home D. And uh, yeah. the big thing behind uh, Home D and the uh, Tech Republic article uh, actually does an all right job of describing it is that the way that the home directory is currently implemented in most Linux distros, it's not really portable. So if something happens to it, you're basically better off just completely removing any trace of it and creating a new user and just using that instead. And part of the uh, initiative behind HomeD is to create a truly portable and secure implementation of the home directory, which is great. Mm. It's actually a really good idea. It just has one unfortunate side effect because uh, part of that security uh, involves encrypting everything. Like everything's Mm. encrypted, including your SSH keys. Mm. So let's say you hit the power button And uh, Ah. like you do now, you hit the power button, the system boots, but it's at login. And you could SSH into your system. Yeah. Once Home D is set up, you can't. That sounds pretty secure. Because the SSH key is is still encrypted. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. They're going to have to fix that, of course. (laughs) As long as I don't notice it, it's kind of like System D, you know. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. The rage against system, yeah. deep, but most distros are using it, and 99.99% of the time, you don't notice it. It just works. You don't have a problem with it. Um, I don't mind system D until I have to do something with it. I'm like, well, I want my init scraps back because I'm old. But <laughs> I like this. It's something that needs to happen. And 
I'm like, ah, it's lettered, but come on, man. <laughs> Let, let's do this. Oh, let's come on. No, no project that lettered pouldering nope. ever implemented as ever attracted Universally any kind loved. of animosity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone loves Pulse Audio. Everyone mm -hmm. loves System D. <laughs> you know what, though? In the end, it eventually gets to... You, get, you, you gotta give him, because the amount of just flack that he's taken with yeah, projects cool. walking out going, listen, guys, he, which he doesn't do. I mean, he's, uh, he's his own flavor of you and being, but going, this, this is... <laughs> This has got to get done. Somebody's got to do it. No one, none of you are doing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah, I'm going to do it my way since none, no one else is doing anything. I'm going to do it my way. My way. <laughs> well, we, you know, as we've like Pedro was saying, we've talked about it quite a, quite a bit here on LWW. And I actually like the idea of having a sandboxed home directory that is encrypted and easily portable. It's, it's good for the desktop. It's good for it, it good for your laptops and your, your desktop computers, but of course, not very good for server side. But Leonard Pottering had had talked about that in the article, how they need they're going to have to fix that. They're going to have to make it good for server side, so you can SSH in and and whatnot, and and from your laptops. <laughs> so, so that does need to get fixed. Yeah. And you know this 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 makes Linux an even more uh, secure and streamlined operating system, and will really help it from you know. Well, the streamlined attacks. bit is debatable, but. Yeah. Secure, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> things change, things bad. Uh, let's talk yeah. about my favorite topic, Scandinavian witchcraft. Um, Hayden uh, Barnes. Right, so yeah. we're on Ubuntu 2004. Very usable. Um, what are we looking at? Gnome on WSL. It's something else I put together next. I plan on adding file. So here it is. There's Excel. Yep. <laughs> Running a Linux file associations. Uh, communications with Windows Runtime. Container VM. Secured over SSH. Turned out to run a bit. Okay, hang on. I'll click the video. Let's see how much faster. <laughs> um, there's Excel. We are clicking. Mm -hmm. There it is. Um, yeah. Okay, that took a little bit. But then again, uh, to anyone who, using Windows 10 out there, you know exactly how yeah. that feels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, what's going on here, man? Well, uh, the way he's done it, it's uh, completely roundabout and honestly, uh, mm -hmm. as cut down as he's managed to make it, uh, and because he straight up says, like, it's actually not using all that much CPU anymore, which is great. And uh, yeah, it's basically running a little containerized VM type of situation. And it runs a very minimal implementation of Windows with Microsoft Office. And it, he just pulls uh, the Excel window over SSH, in this case. So it's kind of like if you've ever downloaded mm. GIMP on Android, like the various implementations of GIMP that you have in the Play Store, they all run like a VM of sorts, and then you run GIMP on it. It's kind of the mm -hmm. same, mm. but with Windows. Yeah. Linux it's subsystem for Windows <laughs> instead of Windows subsystem for Linux. <laughs> it definitely inspired a bit of, oh, that's neat, uh, but why? But hey, man. Yes. <laughs> this, okay, I, I can you, see you can't, why. You can't hate on why, even because this could, I can't tell you how many like things I've come up with or ended up with because I was mm -hmm. doing something that everyone was like, why are you bothering with that? I don't know, but we'll find out. I might learn something that I can implement yes. and turn into a real boy. <laughs> but uh, one of on. the things yeah. that Excel, uh, if you have an Office 365 license and you've been using it over the browser, you know that if you have a sheet with 11,000 different data entries scrolling mm -hmm. on the browser, it's a painful experience very painful mm. uh so i i guess there is i can see the point of having the dedicated thing but why not help the wine team get that working yeah man I mean, electron <laughs> <laughs> yeah electron <laughs> okay, uh, you'll be able to use office and ie under linux very soon <laughs> well yep. It's still Chromium, but <laughs> yeah. don't, don't care, still had IE. Um, yes. <laughs> Firefox is 
released a yes. tool that's kind of handy, though, when you think about it. It is. Mm-hmm. And uh, not all of the um, email providers give you free uh, access to different aliases. And I thought their website was broken for nope. just me, but apparently those pictures aren't showing for anyone. <laughs> They're oh, yeah. Um, I've been having that issue today, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Basically, uh, I think if you have a Microsoft account and, uh, like, office uh, an office license registered to it you can have different uh, aliases in your outlook uh, email you can just create a different alias uh, everything will land on whatever folder you tell that alias to send to but that way you don't have to share your actual email address and just register with an alias for some website or another which is great and firefox is going well we can do that uh, and they're offering basically that they are letting you use their service their relay service as they're calling it to Mm -hmm. set up an email alias that you can redirect to your own um email and then use that alias to register for a site that you're not entirely sure of it's a very good idea (laughs) yeah this is awesome because you know for years i've had i've had um, a separate email account just for internet account signups and then forward the legit emails to to my main email and and this would bypass it it's very very smart uh very cool firefox i'm going to be using this (laughs) one of the things they're going to be doing right with this is adding this into firefox so you don't have to worry about your burner account you're like oh i need um whatever from this site yeah okay send it to me (laughs) because yeah start getting it was like i wonder whose list i ended up on yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> good to see good work mozilla foundation but hey we get to talk about xfce the best yes desktop manager known to humankind and for ah, yes <laughs> well one of them <laughs> It is certainly a desktop environment, but uh, their big news uh, on April 30th, they moved to GitLab. They still have their old, um, basically self-implemented CGIT, GitOlite, but it's in read-only mode and everything is now moved to GitLab. Uh, They also moved the accounts of the main contributors and everyone else who is a regular contributor. Uh, They've moved all of those accounts. Everyone else, go create an account on GitLab and then just, well, do the thing. Uh, Which is uh, also very, very good because if they're not having to host and maintain their own Git implementation, Mm -hmm. that frees up a bunch of time to work on the desktop environment proper and that compositor needs fixing yeah <laughs> come on yeah. It, 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 <laughs> okay in access you can disable it very easily yes yeah <laughs> which is step one step two install compton <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> good on them good on them uh, awesome that's not the only XFC news we have, though. Uh-huh. No, but the, the yes. second bit is sad news. Well, <laughs> yeah. For XFC, anyway. <laughs> hey, yeah. new version of Ubuntu Studio. This is hot. This is great because, hey, we're going to be seeing a lot of new releases like um, Pop and all that based on the 2004, the latest LTS from Ubuntu. They're pleased to announce the release and its um, codename Vocal for the 27th release. Yeah, we know all that. What do we do? Uh, this is the new hotness basically if you know ubuntu studio audio production music production video production this has been put together with you in mind uh this is sporting uh, my paint avl drums yep. ubuntu studio controls LibreOffice press and several other changes that's good yes they yes. even have the latest version of the lsp linux studio plugins uh which i use on this show are available in backports they didn't quite make it into their release but you can still use them now there's a curious curious Mm -hmm. (laughs) they do talk about the future (laughs) yes change down down i'm sorry down the rabbit hole (laughs) desktop environments yeah kde is now the default desktop Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's like, unlike other flavors in Ubuntu, Ubuntu Studio isn't based on a desktop environment. We started to look at it two years ago. Da-da. There's a lot of buildup. And I say a lot of yeah. buildup because you, you don't like yeah. do the song and dance when you're about to make <laughs> everyone happy. You just don't. 
uh, they, they, this kind of gets to the, to quote, if the display compositor proves to be problematic, a simple alt I, uh, I, I had to stop right there. I mean, right here with your announcement, you're like, yeah, plasma is going to mess you up a little bit. Um, <laughs> to the point where we need uh, to say something about it during this really, Pedro, you've heard of this plasma thing before. Because you run the yeah. I have. Yeah. And boy, have I been the one to rail against Kwin. Because <laughs> as compositors go, uh, it's marginally better than the current implementation of uh, the GLX backend in XFCE. Because, you know, you can actually use it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the um, there's uh, that's actually been one of the things that have always uh, been problematic with KDE. It's been mm -hmm. the compositor. And yeah, mm -hmm. Alt-Shift-F12 is usually my go-to. It's like, oh, everything's frozen, Alt-Shift-F12. <laughs> oh, look, I can see things again. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, you know, if you're just going to recommend something that has known problems like Plasma, how about let's just not do it? Don't, don't. Please, no. But, to be yeah. fair, most of the problems are in NVIDIA. So if you're you only know, using, like, AMD or Intel, you're good. Yeah, you're you good. see, if yeah. any part of that is part of my conversation with dealing with something, it's not It's not my life. <laughs> it's the, not, like, yeah. I, I don't care if I have the right hardware. Or the right, If that's part of it, there's something wrong there. It's a far deeper issue. And this yeah. is not about me just being mm -hmm. an XFCE zealot. It's not. No. Um, it's about installing a full-blown DM with all the bits and bugs that come along with the desktop manager for your audio or video production. The, the, this is an appliance. Now, maybe the goal of Ubuntu Studios does. This is a general purpose device that you could use for desktop and gaming and all. You're always going to have a bad time. You, We have an audio box I have built in the studio that is dedicated for audio processing. Its name is mm -hmm. Jackbox. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, originally we're running XFCE, and you know what? 412 nukes everything from orbit in one very important, nay, critical category. <laughs> yes. Stability. <laughs> it yes. doesn't St crash. <laughs> stability, stability, stability. No. <laughs> like, well, then what are you running on the audio box? Or is there XFC? <laughs> no, I don't. I, it's headless. That that's what I run on our audio, Rick. I SSH into it because I don't even want the overhead of having anything running. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Ivory Tower. How you doing down there? What's up? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, it's this is depressing to me because I often have my animation and graphics students install Bento Studio as their first Linux distro because it comes with all the multimedia software. And it uses XFCE, which is stable and runs beautifully on their older computers and laptops. So, and and I know Plasma and KDE, yes, it's gotten faster and it, it, it does perform very well now, but it's just not as stable. With, no. With, especially if you're dealing yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, you're, especially when you're dealing with rent, having to render something for several hours, you know. It's I definitely come at this from like the audio thing. It's like, I don't want a compositor <laughs> running ever. No, 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 no. That's bad, bad and wrong. But hey, I made a thing too. Pedro's not the only one. Yes. <laughs> it's been a minute, but I have a new interfacing Linux out about the X-Touch 1, which is a nice mm -hmm. little control surface. And I needed to find out whether or not it would Linux successfully with our system. Um, it is just a device for controlling your DAW digital audio workstation. Gives you a bunch of buttons and a bunch of knobs, so you don't have to play around with... Um, for me, it's like getting over here to over here virtually with a mouse between these screens versus being able to while mm -hmm. actively on the show talking to you tap 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 and do all that fun stuff so i just walk through hey does this thing you know can you set it up to a let's see a good shot where you can see everything working there it is so mm -hmm. i'm using it with the x touch uh compat that's like our two main pieces of kit that i use for and it worked out of the box short story long that's it and um, if you're looking to pick one up, they do work with Adore. They work with, I know it works with, mm. I think Reaper I tested it with. I don't know if anything else. It's got a bunch of presets for it. It's even got a blink template. So if you want to scribble stuff and like um, scroll of your buttons, bits and bobs, I think it's a little overpriced because it used to be 150 bucks. Now they want like 200 something dollars for it. It's not level. 
the intro to the video is legit. That's how you know that you don't have a knockoff. It's like, well, that wobbles. Yep, that's that's real. It's a real Behringer product. It doesn't have a power button. <laughs> doesn't have a power button. I. Well, it is a Behringer product, so yeah. <laughs> they will do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they will do that. There's no explicable, there's logic to it whatsoever. Some things have power buttons. Sometimes they just can't be bothered. And this is one of those devices. I, I do say buy used, save your money for something like a power switch for your rack because you will definitely wear out the um, barrel plug on the back of that thing. Mm -hmm. Plugging it mm -hmm. in and unplugging it. But uh. there's that. I do want to give a quick mention to your bridge. Not your boy, but your bridge because it's yet another VST bridge to run your Windows VST two plugins under Linux. It's neat. It's a new way to just get some of your VSTs up and running in your DAW. That's pretty neat. Dude's actively fixing bugs. He's asking for suggestions. More options, more better. That's the way I roll oh, yeah. this. And I throw this in from my brothers and sisters out there because you're like, I don't get it. Why are you talking about this stuff? Here's the thing. VSTs is definitely the argument of like using your Windows plugins. Uh, but my Photoshop, I can't run Linux. You know, it says the person who's never run Photoshop in their entire life. That, that's <laughs> what they sound to say online. <laughs> this, this you get from the audio crowd. They're like, well, I can't hear from my VS2. Like, yeah, you can. Um, give me a minute and I'll think of something else. Uh, <laughs> good news. I personally don't have any uh, Windows only VSTs because I've never mm -hmm. ran the window thing. But, well, I, wait, hang on. Nothing, nothing after 3.11. Were there any uh, VST plugins? <laughs> no. Yeah. 3.11? <laughs> my, my life was VST free. <laughs> it was oh, a glorious boy. time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it is using wine, uh, so that uh, yeah. right there should uh, get you started. But they do say it's like, oh, uh, wine 5.7 has some regressions when it comes to uh, application startup. So if you have wine 5.7 installed, downgrade it. That's mm. the thing. Yeah. This, this, this would be a great thing to see in a flat pack. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. it absolutely yeah. would. Yeah, it's just have its own little teeny tiny wine mm -hmm. bottle that you could just add the flat pack to the thing but as a plugin. I'm all in favor of anything that makes moving from Windows to Linux yes. frictionless. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know what else is frictionless? I almost said that word right. Frictionless. <laughs> yes, English, old man. Supporting our nonsense. <laughs> you can do that over at LinuxTeamCast.com. We got a support button. We have Patreon. That's a great thing. Get your name in the credits. You get an extra, man, really like two hours of content a week in uh, yeah. audio format access to the uncut versions. We have Libra Pay. We got merch. Promise you, I'm going to make those fanny yes. packs. Uh, but we have t-shirts <laughs> and all that other fun stuff. PayPal, old school. Uh, we got Wish Zones. We got one for the studio, Jordan, Pedro, and Jill. If you get anything for the studio, that's how you end up on this wall back here. There is limited space mm -hmm. for that. Keep that in mind. And, uh, Magic internet money. We got Bitcoin. That's also a thing. Mm -hmm. But Jill, we have two new Yay! patrons this week. Yes. That their names must be announced forever on the record on the show on a Wednesday. Yeah. So we have a, a new one named Dodger. Thank you so much, Dodger. And we also have OX4D underscore coma, which is actually Oxford coma. <laughs> That's how it translates. Yeah, Oxford coma. Uh, I wanted to throw that out <laughs> to Jordan. Awesome. He's like, hey, Jordan, how do you, how do you, he wanted to like Kiebert Zigla. Um, <laughs> and see what was going to happen. Oh, yeah. Aww. Dodger and Oxford. I, 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 yeah. Dodger, uh, is that? We've been. Dodger, Dodger, Dex bonus Dodger, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because that'd be odd. I'll, I'll check my emails. Uh, <laughs> it would have been great if we, we would have had a, a new patron uh, called Jammy. Then we could add it. I said Jammy Dodger. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Jammy new patrons, Dodger, Oxford an idea. coma. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's not an Oxford comma, it's an Oxford coma. Oxford yeah. coma, man. That's the thing. You guys and gals make this possible. I want to thank each and every one of you. And uh, for the support, I'm going to just keep on keeping on. We got new stuff coming each and every week. But oh. what? Uh, I, got, I got gifted a game by Aldius once again. 
Uh, he oh, Aldeus monk- likes to do that every now and then. Yes. It's like, surprise he's game. So, <laughs> he's so great. He's gifted us so many games, and he, he just gifted me Monster Hunter World, which I'm really looking forward to playing with on my birthday. <laughs> See, I stopped myself. Nice. I was about to say, where's my copy of... And then I was like, you don't have time to play video games. They might show up, so don't. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time for a slice of pie. It's kind of brilliant. Ooh, oh, yeah. This week. Nice. Pretty cool. Oh, pretty I'm very... Cool. Ex- this is something really awesome. So this is amazing. This is a new Raspberry Pi 12.3 megapixel high quality camera for just $50. And this replaces their previous high quality cameras that were 5 megapixel then 8 megapixel. But this one is 12.3 megapixel. And um, it uses a Sony IMX 477 sensor and has a back illuminating sensor sensor architecture for improving sensitivity and it's integrated um, with back back focus adjustment ring and a tripod mount which is really really cool and uh, it's it's amazing also because there are a range of interchangeable lenses there was there's one that starts at $25 and then there's a $50 one even higher quality and it is compatible with all the off-the-shelf C minus and CS mount lenses, which is amazing. So That's you basically, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you basically have a really high-end DSLR with the Raspberry Pi now. And you know who would have thought that we could have you know low-cost, high-resolution uh, camera <laughs> taking. <laughs> this is in video. This is awesome. Thank so, you. For that is a high. huge sensor. <laughs> At yeah. the end of the day, it is, you know, basically <laughs> a decade ago. I mean, for 50 bucks, it's about 10 year old technology. Um, mm-hmm. When you're looking at the sensor, now it does come with the C mount uh, for your lenses, which is great. The important thing is, it's 50 bucks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, very much in the Raspberry yeah. Pi spirit of things. <laughs> yes. That falls in like I just have to pick one up and play with that because I yeah yeah especially think. if you have lenses hang you know floating around <laughs> just with plug a them right in. A little bit of tinkering. Yeah. And mm-hmm. know how I could turn this into a very good webcam. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. It yeah. would take some doing, but I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Good work. Mm-hmm. Good work, everyone. Yay, yep. Raspberry Pi. <laughs> I always love seeing something like that. It's like, people are going to make something cool with that. And I love when people make stuff. That's brilliant. But yes. maybe you're making something and it's really awesome. Or uh, we said something on the show you agree with, disagree with, or maybe here's the important one. What if we said something on the show that you're kind of just impartial to? How, how can they share their impartialness, Pedro? <laughs> well, uh, you can nonchalantly shout your opinions at us if you uh, find us walking down the street, but you can also do uh, that with an extra degree of separation by going to LinkedInCast.com <laughs> and hitting the contact button. There's a bit of a form there. Just make sure you pick LWDW as the show that you're sending your bit of feedback to. Otherwise, we may end up cursing Wait. you and uh, c- saying disparaging remarks okay. about your parents Wait, hang on. Like, <laughs> on that saturday show da, da, what da. we do there that's the partial <laughs> men oh. <laughs> uh you can't have the eight equal equals no no we can do that on saturdays though <laughs> yes but right. this week we did have some uh bits of feedback and uh new yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. who every now and then comments on our YouTube videos is like the FUD around the FileZilla, uh, FileZilla installer showing ads is really blown out of proportion. Plus, it doesn't affect Linux at all. Only for Windows, possibly Mac, not sure. Uh, people mm-hmm. calling to stop using FileZilla over this are very wrong. It's like, okay, you don't comment very often, but whenever you do, it's poignant. Mm. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> what really threw me back with that was yeah. the, how the developer. Oh, go ahead. You got a joke? Oh, um, no, but I was just, just thinking about this because the FileZilla, a lot of people have been complaining about it lately because of the ads. And, you know, I knew it wasn't a problem on Linux, just on Windows. <laughs> 
So what went down was, you know, <laughs> they had some like adware type stuff that like rolled out in some of the updates and that, that was definitely a thing. But it, my right page was how the developers like, this isn't a problem. You shouldn't complain about this. Yeah. The, the, the way that the developer reacted is yeah. the problem. <laughs> it's like, that causes me the worry, like not the product on yeah. Linux. It's more of like, uh, yeah, you know what? I, that's not the kind of person you really, eh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was about that time I realized that you could just SFTP from the, um, Thunar. I was like, oh, pfft. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dolphin. <Dumb. Sinar>. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Peter, what do we have up next? Up next, it's uh, it's Rudy. And Rudy, uh, well, I've been out of the LGC loop for a bit, but I'm back now and this video got me curious. Do you use the default generic kernel on Debian or do you use some kind of low latency variant on the machine that's processing audio? Linux is not good for real-time audio processing. It's one of those things that tends to come up in discussions, often followed by someone saying you absolutely need to be using a low latency kernel if you do audio processing on Linux. But I'm not sure if that's still relevant in 2020. Well, uh, chances are if you commented that on the video that I think you mm -hmm. did, uh. Yeah, Ven's the one to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but that would be boring. Make something up, Pedro. <laughs> it's, yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Jack is awesome, and Pulse Audio is, is better than the default Windows sound system. <laughs> so to the question, what we have is, um, you, you got a generic kernel. That's what you're going to be shipping with. Um, Availability, you have a hard RT kernel that uh, you will find in Debian. However, you're going to, if you need hard RT, I know what I just said. Um, <laughs> you're going to have to hard rebuild it because the clock said it's something moronic, like 400 megahertz. You need to set that to a grand. And uh, there's a couple other things. If you need full preempt RT, then you're going to have to patch that unless you just rebuild the stock Debian kernel. Nine times out of 13, you're going to be able to get away with a low latency kernel. Canonical. You do good there. You drop a low latency variant right with the distro. You can roll back to it. Probably all you're going to need. You don't need anything fancy. Linux, when it comes to dealing with real-time audio, beats everything. Now, as far as performance, it beats Mac. It beats Windows. Handily. Problem is, software availability. Mm -hmm. Then you got... This is like, then you got to deal with Jack. Jack's a whole other can of nope that you don't want to have to deal with. But hopefully um, Pipewire is going to help sort. See, I'm building up Pipewire because it's a one-person job, <laughs> and I hope he listens. He's like, man, you better dial that back a little bit. Now nah, I'm giving you something to strive for. To be fair, SSL was a two-person job, and uh, yeah. the entire internet's using it. So. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole thing. But more to the point, if you're not using Jack... You can get away with it, but the perfect example, I was compiling kernels last night because I was like, can I run like a 420 versus a 5.3? I forgot to build a low latency. I forgot to build the kernel as low latency, and I couldn't understand why I was just spewing out um, X runs. I'm like, what changed? All I did was reboot, and I was mentally exhausted at the time. That's why I forgot. Then I finally went back, and I was like, make X config because I'm lazy. I like that GUI. I've been doing it since I was a teenager. <laughs> Um, with it there and I just happened it's like oh that's why that's the difference between a system that works and a system that doesn't work so um, yeah hopefully that mm -hmm. confused you slightly less than it answered <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah basically if you're doing real uh, if you're doing any kind of audio processing you want to use real time that's still true in 2020 well, you really mm -hmm. do. Like, Pedro's got to say a thing. It's got to go over the internet. It's got to hit this box, get processed, mix minus, split out, come to this box. And it round trip, it's got 5.3 milliseconds to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, preempt very minimum. All right, beautiful people. Um, I think we got to bounce out of here. Maybe roll some credits. Do you think we can try that? Yeah. Yes. Hang on. Hang on. I don't know if I loaded them up. Uh, we might be able to. <laughs> Yeah, I just play with it. Cool. Well, while you look for the credits, I suppose I should read the thing that uh, Mir, he bought me some tea that I forgot during the uh, plugs. All right. Enjoy your gift of delicious tea. May it help you deal with the idiots while working. 
<laughs> thank you, Beer. <laughs> Very that, good. <laughs> that box of tea pigs is already halfway down, so thank you. <laughs> Aww. Come at me, Netflix. <laughs> yeah, and everyone <laughs> out there, remember the LGC meme, Pop OS is best OS. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you the LGC meme. Yeah, I was just like, what, how are we doing that? You just make something up. I'm like, it's a meme now. <laughs> no, it's a meme now. <laughs> well, System76 know the meme. And, and of course, Matthew in our uh, Strider, otherwise known as Lutra, uh, Creator of Lutris, is the one that came up with it. So. <laughs> ah, it's a Strider meme. Okay. Yeah, it's a Strider meme. <laughs> so, yeah, ignore it. It's brilliant. <laughs> 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 That'll teach it. <laughs>